Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. This is Yogita from CSE department. In today's topic, we are going to see about recursion in C programming. So without any further delay, let's dive into the topic. So now looking at the picture, you can see two pictures. One is, uh, as you all know, it's Laddu. And the second one is uh, Bundis, right? So now if you give a piece of Laddu to a baby, it will not be able to eat it in one go. So what would, what would it do instinctively is, it would try to break the laddu into pieces. So why is it doing like that? Because it, it is not able to eat it in one go, right? So basically that is recursion. So what we are going to do is, we are going to take a problem, but we cannot provide a simple solution to a bigger problem, right? So now to make the solution in a more simpler way, we are just going to break down the problem into sub problems and then we are ju just going to give the solution to all the sub problems and combine it together into one problem uh, which will give a solution to one whole problem right. So now let us uh, see in computer science terms. So if you see here this is a program uh, so I have uh, just returned a program for the same laddu. So now you have a laddu right and you are going to break the break that laddu into Bundis, right? So how we are going to do this using recursion in computer science, that's what we are going to see in today's topic, right? So now this is the function that I have written. So this is function's name laddu and its argument is n. That means we are going to have n number of Bundis in the laddu. And what is our task? Our task is to break down those laddus into Bundis, right? So how we are going to do this is using your recursion. So I have written a program for Laddu. So if you see here the uh, function name is Laddu. So this is going to be my recursive function. So as we as you all know recursion means the function calling itself again and again. So without uh, you know explaining it with definition I am just going to uh, explain it as the whole topic. So now here what we are going to do is this is my Laddu function. So now this function is going to call itself again and again until all the laddus becomes bundis, right? So now here n is the number of bundis in your laddu, right? So now we are going to, you know, call the function again and again and convert your whole laddu into bundis, right? So let us dive into the function. So now you have, as usual in a C program, you will have a main function and you will have a user defined function. So in this main function, you are going to call the user defined function, right? So for a simpler uh, manner, we are going to take only three bundis in our laddu. So it's going, it's going to be a very small laddu. So we are going to, you know, call the laddu with n value as three. So wh what happens in the back end, right? So now in your uh, uh, computer programming, generally, all your functions will be stored in a data structure called stack. So here, as usual, we have a system stack here. So what we are going to do is, this is my main function and we are going to call the uh, function laddu with n value as 3. That means n is equal to 3 will be stored inside the stack and then this will be paused and your function will be called. So now we are going to call the function with n value as 3 and then we are going to execute the actual code. So as per our concept, we can, you know, return the output only all your, only when all your laddu becomes bundis, right? So now we have given a condition where when you have only one bundi, you can return as such. But when you have two or more bundis, then you need to, you know, call your function again. So that's what we are going to do here. Now my n value is 3. So what is the first condition? First, it will check whether my n value is 1. But in our case, it is 3. 3 is not equal to 1, so it will go to the else part and it is going to, you know, run this else part and return this value. What is the value? 1 plus laddu of n minus 1. So we are just going to, you know, decrement your laddu 1 by 1 unless it becomes bundis, right? So now my n value was 3 and I am going to decrement it as 1 plus laddu of 2. So if you see here, we are calling the user defined function again, which is your recursive function, right? What is recursive function? Function calling itself. So now this laddu is called uh, calling itself again. So it will go here, right? And your uh, in the stack you will have n is equal to 3. This is your main function and n is equal to 3. This is your user defined function for laddu of 3. 
So now you, we are going to call your laddu of 2. So again n will be stored as 2 and the function will be executed. Again it will check whether 2 and 1 are equal. It is not equal, it will go and execute the else part. So it, it is going to return 1 plus laddu of n minus 1 which is your 2 minus 1. So your answer is going to be 1 plus laddu of 1. Right. So now again uh, it is calling your uh, user defined function laddu. So again this will be called right and we are going to call it for n, va n value as 1 now. And when your n value becomes 1 your main condition itself becomes true because what is your main condition when your n is 1 you are going to return it. That means when you have only one boondi in your hand you are going to return the boondi as such right. So now we are going to check whether my 1 is uh, equal to 1 it is equal and it will be returned to your previous function right. So now the top of the value which is your top of the stack will be popped off as such and then it will be returned here and laddu of 2 is going to be 1 plus laddu of 1. Now we know the answer for laddu of 1 which is 1 boondi and we are going to join that with the next one which is going to be 2 and then again the laddu of 2 will be returned to laddu of 3 which is 1 plus laddu of 2 which we know the answer 1 plus 2 3 and the final answer will be returned over here and it will be printed in the main function. So this is the flow of recursion. So what we are doing basically here is we are having a recursive function and then we are calling the recursive function again and again and again and again. Once we get the whole integer as the output, we are just returning back and finding the whole solution. This is the whole concept of your recursion. So now we will see how to write a recursive function. Now we know what is recursive function. It is nothing but calling your function again and again. So now we will see how to write it. So we just have three simple steps for writing your recursive function. One is identifying the sub problems of the given problem. Only when you you know identify the sub problems you can divide it further and you can give a solution. So the first step would be identifying the sub problems and dividing the main problem into sub problems. And the second step would be writing the recursive function for your main problem. Only then you will be calling it again and again until you get your solution. So the third step would be specifying the base condition so that the recursion would stop. As we all know recursion is an endless process because it is going to call itself again and again and again. So we need to have one condition where uh, in that particular condition your recursion process stops and you get the first solution. So whenever you get your first solution that is what you call it as a base condition. So when you write your recur recursive function three steps are very very important. First you should be able to divide your problems into sub problems and then you need to identify a main recursive function for the problem and then you need to identify the base condition where you get your first output. So now we are going to take the very famous example factorial. So we are going to write a recursive function for finding the factorial of a given number. In mathematics as you all know factorial is, factorial is nothing but multiplying the numbers until the actual number. Like for example if you are going to find the 5 factorial we are just going to multiply the numbers from 1 till 5. So if you want to find 6 factorial we will be multiplying the numbers from 1 till 6. So here we are going to write the recursive function for finding this same thing. So in your recursive function basically you should have two parts. One is your base case and the second one is your recursive procedure. As I already told base case is a point where you get your actual output at first point because you are going to call the function again and again. So at one point you will be getting the whole solution. So that point is your base case and the rest of your program is going to be your recursive procedure. So now let us move on and see how to write your fact function. So here what is the first step? First is dividing the given problem into sub problems. So what is our problem finding the factorial? So what we will do is we will take the factorial and we will try to you know expand the factorial from 1 till 5 because here in our example we are going to uh, see how to find 5 factorial. So let us take from fact of 1. So fact of 1 is going to be 1 and fact of 2 is going to be 2 into 1 and fact of 3 is going to be 3 into 2 into 1 fact of 4 is going to be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and fact of 5 is going to be 5 multiplied till 1. So if you look at this one, your fact of 5 is nothing but 
5 into your fact of 4. So, if you see here 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is actually your fact 4's answer. So, if you come to your fact of 4, it is nothing but 4 into fact of 3. So, if you come to fact of 3, it is nothing but 3 into fact of 2. So, basically, if you want to generalize the solution, how you will write it? You take your fact of 5 as fact of n. So, what would be the answer? It would be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into it will go on. So, now to give a generalized solution, if you look at it, your fact 5 is nothing but 5 into fact of 4. So, now how will you write for fact of n? So, fact of n is going to be n into fact of n minus 1. So, now this is going to be our generalized solution. So, now we have uh, come up with a generalized solution. Now, we need to find the base condition because only at the base case you will get a whole answer. Only then your recursion will stop at one point. So, what would be the base case? So, if you see here, wherever we get the whole answer without calling your fact function or without ca calling your recursive function, that is going to be your base case. So, if you see here, your fact of 1 is equal to 1. So, the first step is actually your base case because here, we are not calling the recursive function at all, but we are getting the answer. So, my base case is going to be whenever my n is equal to 1, I will just return 1. So, that is going to be my base case or else what am I going to do? I am just going to return n into fact of n minus 1. That is going to be my recursive function. So, what would be the whole program? So, now this is my whole program. So, fact is my function name and n is my variable name. So, when my n is 1, I will just return 1. So, that is my base case. If my n is not 1, then I am going to return n into fact of n minus 1. That is my recursive procedure. So, if you write this program along with the main function, you will get your answer as 120 directly without you doing any calculation. So, this is the whole point of your recursion. So, when you uh, write a recursive function, you just have to keep two things in mind. One is finding the sub problems of all your problem so that you can you know come up with a recursive function and then finding the base condition where you get your whole answer without uh, calling your actual function. So, this is what your recursion is all about right. So, before ending the topic let us just see one more example which is a gate question. So, this is a two mark question that was asked in your gate exam. So, I will just read out the question for you. So, now this is my recursive C function. Now, I am when my n value is 6, they are asking me how, may, how many times your recursive function is being called. So, that means uh, they have given the options also 15, 25, 35, 45. We need to find how many times this function is being called if your n value is 6. So, let us break it down. So, if you see here, we are going to start with get of 6. Get is my function's name. So, first I am going to call my get of 6. Uh, this is my base condition. n less than 1 return is my base condition. At first my n is going to be 6. So, I will just you know keep calling my function until I reach my base condition. So, first I will call for 6. So, when uh, uh, first I will call for 6 minus 1 which is 5. So, first I will be calling get of 5. From there again when my uh, n is 5, I will call for get of 4. So, this all these left hand side tree is for n minus 1, right. So, you will start with n as 6 and then you will be calling again and again for n minus 1 times. So, you will start with 6, then you will call 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. So, when you come to 0, your condition gets satisfied, n less than 1. So, 0 is less than 1, condition satisfied that means you are returning. So, returning means you are not going to return anything, you are return ba returning back to the previous step. So, you will return here and then you will call your next value for 1, right. So, what is the next value? For n minus 1, we have completed. Now, next is n minus 3. So, for 1, what is your n minus 3? It is going to be minus 2. So, if you uh, have uh, minus 2, that means minus 2 is less than 1, you are just going to return. So, return back to the previous step. So, for 2 you will call for n minus 3. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So, again minus 1 is less than 1, you will just ret return back to the previous step. So, then you will call for 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So, you will call for get of 0 
and then you will just return to the previous step. So when you come here, you are going to call for get of 4. So get of 4, n minus 3 is going to be 4 minus 3 which is 1. So for get of 1, we have already find, found how many times we are going to call. So without, uh, you know, without drawing the tree again, we are just going to add this two calls plus your get of 1. The same way when you come for get of 2, we have already called 4 times. So we are just all adding the calls over here. Because what is our uh, objective? Our objective is to find how many times this is being called, right? So again when you come for 5, 5 minus uh, 3 is 2. So for get of 2, 4 times we are ca calling, so plus 4. And when you come for 6, it is going to be get of 3. For 3, we have called 6 times, we are just adding the 6 calls. Now add everything, you will get your answer as 25. So that means we are calling this particular function for 25 times when your n value is 6. So this is all about recursion. Like this, you have a lot of gate questions and other questions based on this recursion topic. So it's a very important topic. I hope you all understood what I just uh, took. Thank you so much.